This video is for educational purposes only. For those that really want to see the psychology behind these kinds of interrogations, there is use of strong language and references to graphic and disturbing events. This is for mature audiences only. This Jody Arias interrogation took place for more than six hours, so we've broken it down into a series of one hour long segments. That playlist is in the tab to the top right. That should pop up now. To see how Jody got herself into this situation, we also covered the case, and the link is in the description below. The best thing that you can do to support this channel is to like and subscribe. We have multiple videos each week that consist of various case breakdowns, interrogation highlights, and full interrogations just like this. If that's your sort of thing, we would love to see you in the next one. Enough rambling, let's get into it. his death, but it's something they may want to see. Um, two nights ago, it took me five and a half hours, but I posted a 45 minute video on YouTube of him doing a training in San Bernardino. Um, Where did you post that? On YouTube. YouTube. If you go to YouTube, it, it takes some time, a couple hours to actually get it up. And, you know, once it's pro they have to go through some processing thing. But if you type in Travis Alexander, space dash space uh systems training so systems apostrophe s training it should come up what is it for? travis alexander and then a dash it's like a space and a dash space and just a dash yeah and then a systems training apostrophe on this i don't know if that makes a difference but that's exactly what i titled it and then his friend Chris Hughes gives about a six and a half minute introduction to him and then Travis gets up there and does a 30 minute training. And he talks a lot about what's in the introduction to his book. Um, he talks about his grandfather, Vic. That loves his grandparents. Yeah. Yeah, he still loves his grandparents. Yeah. He loves his parents and his family. And he and I have similar beliefs and you know, we know he's okay now. I know, and I know that he's okay, and he's in a good place, and I know that that doesn't make it any better here for anybody. But, there's always that but. I think he's waiting for you to give relief to other people who are still here with us. And you, you know you have to. You can't leave it unfinished. It's the last piece of this puzzle. And it is completely up to you, Jody. Like I told you yesterday, I have details on how things happen. There's ways to figure out. But the biggest question that everybody always asks is why? It's the biggest question of our life. It is. Why are we here? Why do we suffer? Why do we go through the things that we do? Why do we hurt each other? And the biggest reason I've ever found is for us to have happiness. We're here to have I think you're happiness right. in whatever situation that we have, no matter where we're at, who we are, and what our situation is, we can at least try to be happy. Do you want to talk about what happened that day? I've got the images in my head and I can explain whatever it is you want about what I saw when I went there. But what I can't do is I can't show you pictures.
time did you get there that day? The pictures that I have, the first ones, show you there at about 1.45 or so. Was it soon before that, or had you been there for a while already? I know his roommates are off at work during that time and don't come home till about 6 30, 7 o'clock. They don't even talk to him really. It just seems like they just kind of rent rooms and they don't really socialize and they kind of stick to themselves. Especially his new roommate. Who was that? Did you know his new roommate? And I knew it, Zach was there. Zach and uh, Enrique was the other one. I think I saw Enrique at his funeral services, yeah. or I mean his memorial services, but I didn't meet him, so, or I didn't know him. So Mexican guys. Kind of short. Quiet, kind of reserved. Um, his other roommates I knew, Dustin, who was, I think, in the room that shared Travis's wall, yeah. And John Hepworth was in the other corner room. There was only Zach and Enrique there. Yeah. And those guys, we, we have all of their things as well, so... I mean, they're asking too. They're, Zach is going through so much right now. He's like, how can we, how could we have not known that he was there for days? He's, he racks his brain. He calls me two, three times a week. goes over and over in his mind he has no idea and he was the one who first went into the room and found him he's the one mm -hmm. heard so many rumors about how that happened yeah well the friends came over looking for him and they went into the room there's a few of them they came out and you know what they'll never be the same they you see something like that, it's it's difficult, especially when it's somebody you know, some, somebody you love. I deal with it all the time, so it doesn't bother me as much. You must have to remain detached quite a bit. Mm -hmm. You know who, the, who I usually get attached to? Is mm -hmm. the people I'm talking to. To you. You're, you're the one that I'm going to remember. I remember him, but I didn't know him. I will remember you. I mean, we've talked so much since that day. Over the phone and here. And I'll probably talk to you some more later when we get back to Arizona. Whenever you go, I don't know. Everybody's hurting already. There's nothing else you can say or do that could help that except for maybe an explanation of why it happened and how it happened. And it's not my job to have an opinion of you and your personality and your character. It's, it's my job to sit here and talk to you and get the facts of the of the incident and and present those to to the court and whoever else needs to know. You wanna to try to open up and, and talk about what happened that day? Because I'm ready. I do, but I don't think I'm ready. I mean there's not much to say. 
Do you want to start and we can stop at any time you want? Fill in some details. This is what I do to assure that you're not just saying you did something just to cop out. Because there are certain details that only I know and the person who did this knows. Nobody else does. And I use this information to confirm what I suspected. So if you can just start and give me some details as confirmation, then that'll be fine. And if you want, we can continue at another time. Well, then let's start. Because I know that part that really wants to is the part inside of you that is telling you to do what's right. We don't have to go over details, all the details. Did you go there that day, Jody? Why did you show up that morning? I have questions too. Were you gonna try to convince them not to go to Mexico? Were you gonna oh, no. try to convince them to go on a trip with you or? No, he would never not go to Mexico. I would never want him to not go. He was um, going to see Chichen and Itza, and it's on the list of a thousand places. That's one of the things I want to do in my lifetime. Yeah, it's an important part of our mm -hmm. history, both in the church and against our heritage, too. That's where my people come from. Yeah. So why were you there that day? Please tell me. Did you just miss him? Did he call you? Did he miss you? What, what was it? The only other explanation I can think of is that you went there for one purpose. And that's to hurt him. And if that's the case, if that's the truth, then that's what you need to say. you want me to call and tell his family that you, you're sorry and that you apologize for what happened, I can do that. Whatever you want. This is your time right now. I flew up here for a lot of different reasons and one of them, the main reason, was to sit down with you here and talk to you about what happened. I did it yesterday, and now I'm here today, but the time is limited. There's so many things that I want to say. I'll start with one. I'll start with the beginning. Was it a last minute change from your trip to come down, go to, down to Arizona? I bet you were going through your head. Should I just go or should I just keep going to Utah? It's only an additional 300 miles from where you were or so.
Jody, your time's running out. I'm not going to be able to talk to you anymore. And I want to. Once you get into the system, I'm not going to be able to talk to you anymore. so many questions unanswered for me and for his family and for your family. You were there that day, weren't you? Were you guys alone? Answer that for me. Were you guys alone? There's so much that I just want to. Answer that for me. Should I be looking for somebody else? Is there anybody else with you besides you and Travis? Are you protecting somebody else? This is what you need to focus on right now. You had Rachel call me for a reason. That's why I came back here. I had her call you about those photos. Um, but I also thought that because you communicate with his family more regularly, I don't think she's done. I just don't know what to say. They deserve to have some kind of peace. Well, you want me to ask you a question that they've been asking me? Maybe you can answer it. Same question I've been asking you. Was there somebody else with you? That's the number one question that his whole family has been asking. What do I tell them? What do you want me to say to them? Because the only answer I can give them is, I don't have any evidence to show there was anybody else there. Well, that's another way of saying, I don't know for sure. And that's absolutely true. I don't know if somebody else was there with you. Please give me that at least. there was, you don't have to say a name. It's a simple yes or no. Yes or no, Jody?
was somebody else there with you. Nothing else changes. It just speeds up the process. In what way? Do I go to Arizona faster? Yeah. The process in Arizona speeds up. So if I maintain my innocence, then I stay here longer? Just in the no, no, you don't really anything. stay here longer. It speeds up the process in Arizona. Like the trial and all that jazz? Yeah. Do you want to put your family through a trial? That's another question you have to ask yourself. No. Can I do it all without a trial, or does there have to be a trial? It's something that you can discuss with the prosecutor. Huh. And I'm on the phone with him pretty much every day, giving him updates. What's his name? His name is Juan Martinez. He's the number one prosecutor in Phoenix. Well, at least in my book, he is. Is Phoenix part of Marco? Yes. I wonder if I should just get a lawyer first. That's completely up to you. I know that you can't stay here forever and you need to go back. But mm -hmm. If I get one, will you be able to still talk to me afterward? Or does it, everything stop or what? I'll tell you exactly what a lawyer's going to tell you to do. He's going to say, nope. Nope on what? No more contact. She had her chance. You had your chance to talk to her. It's over. Well, I mean, I just would want his advice. And it doesn't necessarily yeah. mean that... He, um, that I'm going to take his advice, nor does it mean that, you know, that's completely up to you. Sitting Julie. in a cell somewhere, not saying anything is going to help. I can't advise you either way. But what I can advise you on is the truth. The details of the case that you have in your head that you can give me will allow me to verify the information that I have to make sure that I'm looking at the right person and to verify my theory that nobody else was there with you. It's like I said yesterday, there is no doubt in my mind what happened there that day couple of details that I don't have. How it started and why it started. And like I said before, if you can provide me just a few, I can at least relate to the family. That would be fine with me. If you don't want to give all the details, we don't have to go through all the details. But let's, uh, let's at least start. Let's start right here, right now. If there's a question that I ask you that you feel like you don't want to answer, you can say, no, I don't want to answer that right now. 
right now. forward or no? Yes, I do. I just... You do? I do, I do, but... Well, let's do it. I just... I'm here. I know. I'm not trying to stall. I'm not trying to waste your time. I know I'm you're trying not trying to, to stall. It's... I know it's difficult for you. It's difficult for anybody sitting in your shoes right now. your own free will. That's one thing that we have is our own free will. It's kind of, it's all really blurry. It really is blurry. What went through your mind after it happened? A lot of fear? What did you think when you were driving away? I'm scared. I can't imagine what you were going through waiting for it to finally come out. Waiting for what to come out? The news that he no longer with us. He must have been going through hell. Every day that went by, what were you thinking? I'm scared. What was that? I was scared. I'm sorry. And you just went on with your day like nothing had happened. I had to. You had to. Did you tell anybody what had happened? It must have been hard. It's all a blur. Can I please see those photos? As soon as I get back, the detectives went to Reading to 
I'll pick up the rental car that you had that day. And they took the photos. Oh. I should probably have something in the rental car. Like what? Maybe guns. In the trunk. In the back seat. That's what we're going to look for, so. I was just thinking maybe the handles, lock steering wheels, and things that get touched. Is that what was going through your head when you left? What did I leave behind? What did I touch? No. What was going through your head when you left this neighborhood there? Just kind of doing the run. Um, a little bit of a survival instinct, but it was mostly just Fear. Are you worried that his roommates were going to get home soon? I was home. Did you even think about them? First thing that I was thinking about is when she left here, she barely missed his roommates. Or maybe his roommates had gotten home and just didn't hear her. Did they hear anybody at all in the house? No. They saw things which were unusual. Like what? They saw his CTR ring watch on the kitchen counter and they thought that was odd. He never leaves town without those. No, he always leaves those there, but unless he's sleeping, then he takes those things and puts them on. There were clues here and there, but they just went on with their day like nothing had happened without even asking questions. They knew that he was going on a trip, but they didn't know what day. That's he was supposed him. to leave on Tuesday. On Tuesday. The following week. That's right. little things that they talked about now. They, Zach is killing himself. He's like, I, I don't know how I did not see this. Why didn't I just go check on him? Why didn't I just follow my instinct and go look? Travis didn't always bond with his roommates. He did yeah. with some. He bonded with Aaron even though he had an intolerance for Aaron's lifestyle. Mm -hmm. He bonded pretty well with his friend Josh Ward who lives back in Southern California. He wasn't too close with Zach or Lincoln. No, or his previous roommates. They, they, they seemed to, they seem to have been just people who rent rooms out from them. They don't become friends. They, yeah, they were just- They have their own lifestyles and, and they go on. Yeah, he, his rules were, you know, LDS standards and pay your rent on time be clean. What time did you leave there that day? trying to drive and get as much distance as you could. Um. How long were you in the house after it happened? I know you tried to clean yourself up and clean up what you could. Mm -mm. It didn't take too long, but you, you did. Did you throw the camera in the washing machine? We 
found blood in the downstairs bathroom where somebody had tried to wash her hands. There's blood on the outside of the washing machine. There's, there's little things that give us clues to what you were doing afterwards. Do you remember those things? Mm -mm. No. You remember some. What was your intention in going there that day? What was the purpose of the visit? The same as before? plans on going down there or I know you said he had called and wanted you to come down. At what point did you decide, okay, I'm going? He always was like, not, I don't want to say meddling, but he was always like more concerned than I felt he needed to be about my finances. And he's like, well, how can you make a road trip when you're this, that, and that, and, you know? Oh, he expected everyone to be like he is. <laughs> he did. He really did. He expected that, hey, if you go on a road trip, you better be thinking about this and that. And there were so many times where I just threw my responsibilities to the wind and went on road trips with him because I am a little irresponsible when it comes to that. It's not just because it was with him. It's because it was the traveling. Yeah. And, um, you know. When he leaves, he, he usually makes sure everything is planned out. And and that he has enough money for it. Yeah. And you just kind of take off sometimes. Yeah, I guess. You're a very, very free spirit. And it's I've known that from the beginning. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good. What gives you the indication, like, when you say you know that from the beginning? I'm talking to you. I'm talking to people who know you. It's like, oh, that's just Joey, you know? I am a little she just, she just <laughs> When you want to go do something, you just go do it, and you'll deal with the consequences later. Yeah. When did you decide to go visit him? At what point? Were you already on the road, or was it from here? Did you already know you were going to go visit him when you left here? Um... I've done that before. Sometimes I just leave and, oh, you know what? I'm going to go visit this person while I'm on the way. see any of his, uh, his roommate's cars out in the driveway when you left? That part just bothers me because it was so close to the time when one of the roommates came home. And I just, I'm thinking maybe you were still in the house when he was there. No, um, no, I was in the driveway. You were in the driveway? They would have seen the car then, right? Yeah. Oh, my space was always right behind Travis's car, and he parked in the, it's a three-car garage, and he took the middle space. And one oh, was the Prius. Two, yeah, the, the Prius, or his BMW before that. And then there was like a smaller little space, but it was enough for a car, but it was always jammed with junk from his yeah, roommates. So he was very much, a, he didn't save stuff, you know. Yeah. He had so much storage space. He was so generous when I moved there. He let me store all my stuff there, because I went from, I went from, 
a house to a room. And so I had artwork, some I paint, and then art supplies, photos, books and books and books and books. So many books. Some aren't even mine. They belong to my friend Matt. I was running that car yesterday mm -hmm. because I was taking a trip to Monterey. And oh, is it Matt? Yeah, I was gonna drop off some books to him that I'd had for years. We dated like eight years ago. We're still friends. So, um, all of his books that somehow I ended up keeping, and some were mine, some were like esoteric and spiritual kind of books that I'm probably never gonna read now because they're just so out there. I'm sure they'll get those back to you. And then some photos also to Daryl, who was another guy I dated after Matt that we bought the house together. And kitchen supplies. I Daryl paid for so much when he was there. He mm -hmm. footed the bill with Costco, so I had um they said that they took knives out of my car. Um I don't even know who they are, you know. Oh, they're Daryl's. I mean okay. they've been in storage for years just collecting well, desks. Good to know that they're his. Yeah, no. They were all just they one might have been mine, but like I just I think they were Daryl's. And so there's those and a bunch of kitchen supplies and pictures of him and his son mostly and we used to go to 49er games all the time just on camping trips so the car you had driven there was the rental car yeah the ford focus oh that's that, the car they're going to go you... pick up ford focus oh yeah i know they, they were going to rent you another car but then uh, something happened with that first car either you didn't like it or Oh, problem. it was red, and I thought, because I always hear that you don't drive a red car, because I would never buy a red car, and it was fine, it was a Ford Focus too. Um, and you got the other car instead. I was the like, do you one? have one with a more neutral color, because red is like, you always get pulled over and you get tickets. No, I don't know if that's true, it's just it's something I've been true. told since. Um, it's just there's a lot of people have red cars who like to go fast. It's a personality um, thing. It's not because of the car color. And I just, for me, it's a psychological thing because it's more noticeable and it's like, you know, a red flag or a bowl kind of thing. Um, I know Travis doesn't lock his doors when he's home. Was the door open when you got there? Or did you have to go to the garage? Or how did you get inside? Did you knock? Everybody says he just leaves his doors open when, he, when he's home. He trusts yes. everybody. Um, have you ever seen the movie The Secret? It's kind of, you're familiar with the whole law of attraction kind of thing. Like what you think you become, what you bring into your life. That's true. He felt um, that if you lock your doors, then what are you telling the universe? What are you telling the ether out there? Is that I need to lock my door for a reason. Yeah, I, I want to be safe. Yeah, I want to be safe. <laughs> which also gives the impression that, well, there's somebody that could hurt me. So, and by trusting and opening them to He's a safe. very, very trusted person. And that's what made him who he is. Most of us come from a different kind of background and, and have a different type of philosophy. Doing, I do. Doing what I do for a living, I lock my doors. I can imagine. Yeah, I guess me coming from Salinas, mm -hmm. I've always locked my doors. I used to go to sleep at night and I would hear gunshots. We weren't in a bad neighborhood, but our neighborhood neighbored another neighborhood that wasn't that great and gunshots carry. And there were, because Salinas is agricultural and there were a lot of fields, and I used to think that there were hunters in the field with their dogs catching animals or something. Like they were all just gangs. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to. That's okay. okay. I've noticed that when I've talked to you, you kind of go off sometimes. Travis used to be like, get to the point. <laughs> get to the point. And he, and that made me kind of mad. He had a little bit of a double standard with that because if you've ever, if you ever see him train or talk, he, ask any of the leaders in prepaid legal, he is notorious for going too long. Mm -hmm. um, his friend Dave Hall in Utah cuts him off and he, get, he got mad at him once because he went five minutes over and he was, you know, he just talks and talks and talks. And I yeah. said, you know, you're kind of long-winded yourself. Well, he, had a, he had a future in that, you know, that's what, yeah. that's what he wanted to do yeah, and he was good true. at it. He, he was, was so really good. good. He talks about things with more substance though, and I just ramble. So was the door unlocked when you got there? Oh, did you go, you went through the door of the garage? I know a lot of his friends have the key code for the garage too. He doesn't keep that a secret either.
Um, I got that from several different friends. Yeah, Sarah White owns it. Was he expecting you? had was not wrong, Jody. Going over all his stuff, he was always happy to see him. <laughs> he told me this time when, because I was in his ward boundaries, so uh, one of my roommates went to his church and they were doing some church activity and Travis was getting a ride <laughs> um, when he said his friend Katie Barnes was in the back seat he was in the other seat and there were two people in the front I guess they were all going to squeeze in and go to this church activity and they were swinging by to pick up Amy <laughs> my roommate and I wasn't there I don't think I was at work or something but he said he wasn't doing much he must have been on his phone or something texting but he said he, they parked and he looked up and it was my house and he's like what are we doing here? <laughs> And he freaked out. I started laughing so hard when he told me that story. And they're like, we're getting Amy. She's going with us. Oh, okay. And he just kind of sat there, twiddled his thumbs, and then he got Amy, and she left. This is after you guys broke up. Well, yeah, because by the time I lived in yeah, that house, we right. together. It was just, I think it just weirded him out. I don't know what reminded me of that just now. You said something. He was happy to see you. Yeah. I don't think he would have. He would have probably been. It would have been awkward, I think, then. Because we kept... You guys had a different kind of relationship. You guys were happy to see each other, but for some reason he couldn't outwardly show it in public. He um, he was he was afraid of his image, and to him his image was everything. And he it, told me on several occasions it it saddened him and it bothered him. He had two friends in particular that gave him a very hard time about our friendship, and that was Chris and Sky. Um, but I think they did it out of concern for his his future, um, his like his marital status. Um, you know, by him and I continuing that, we were both just postponing what we should be focusing on instead. Well, you're living life. Life is what you make of it. It's it's not set in stone. Yeah, I don't think it's you always have our priorities in the right I know place. the church has a general plan. You you go if you're a guy, you go and go on a mission. You come back, you find a girl, you get married, and you start having kids start contributing to society and to your church. Yeah, that's really not what that looked you, like. You came into something. I don't know whether you, you came in with both feet or you still had one foot out, but it's a whole different society in that church. I, it's an all it or is. nothing. It is, and I think that's just because the church actually And that's what people lives struggle their standards. with. It's, they have the utmost standards, and you look around, and there's not one person in that church, in those pews, who doesn't need to be there. And if they were perfect, they wouldn't have to go. And sometimes I think it's a facade. I know. And Travis kept trying to live up to those standards, but he's a human being and he's both of you are mortal and you have free will, and that's that. Sometimes I think maybe he put too much pressure on himself to be perfect, or to at least portray himself to be perfect. And that's maybe why something like this happens. Things get way out of hand. I just, I, 
you know, I'm not an evil person. Um, I know you're not. But I've always had, and I'm not a promiscuous person. Um, Something attracted you guys to each other. Yeah, and I think there was also, I already, I knew him well. I knew him through and through. I loved him and I cared about him. Um, and I, I knew we weren't going to get married, so I just... But How did you know you weren't going to get married? Um, a couple like, of reasons. It's like oil and water? You guys just don't mix? Oh, we mixed really well for a time. But I think when I discovered his ways last year, it, it was so hard, but... Um, what ways are those? Um, I just, he didn't seem like husband material, but I, it didn't mean that he wouldn't be in the future. It just meant that, um, something that Chris and Sky said to me back in January of 2007 really stuck. And they said, do you want to be like Deanna and wait six years? Yeah. They made jokes saying, if you wait six years, you can get free breast implants. Because he bought her breast implants at one point. And they're like, and then he'll really do it, you know. Just all these things. And I was like, what? Why would they say this? Anyway. That one part stuck, though, and and I felt that, you know, women have, not all women, you know, not Mimi and not certain other women, but most women just fall all over themselves for Travis, because he's nice and he, he seems like the whole package. I think Mimi kind of saw through everything. There's some people out there that can see through stuff. I was, um, I kind of did too, like I had never been pursued by a person like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, I saw, I, I'd like to say, like, Mimi saw through this, but I saw beneath that and through that. Like, there, like he wrote that thing on his blog, The Gold From Within. And I really did see, like, inside, he was an amazing person. He was a good person. He was a generous person. He, he gave so much, and he... Well, maybe you, you chose to actually look past that first level. Somebody like Mimi looks past that first level and sees that's already something I don't like already, and I'm not going to look any further. You yeah, on the other she hand, she spends a lot of time at the temple, so I think yeah. that this, I've never been endowed, I've never been through the temple, but from what I understand, I think that's such a sacred place, and, and meditating there and being there will help to give you further insight about where just you as a person are supposed to make a move on a certain decision in your life. So maybe that just wasn't for her. That's true. I also was thinking. After the fact, I didn't get every chance to discuss this with him. I didn't know she was going to Cancun, but um, and I didn't know she didn't. She flat out told him no. But I thought so. That's completely out of the the, the theory that you went there to convince him to oh to yeah. not go. No, not at all. Not at all. Okay, because that's the first theory that was that was thrown out there was she was jealous. She knew that he was going to Cancun with this other girl, and it was just jealousy. I never. It's the simplest. I asked thing. him at one point after I moved. I was like, I was like, hey, who are you taking to Cancun? By the way, I knew it wasn't. At one point, there was a girl named Brenda who, and she wasn't romantically involved. She just in the business, and she saw me at the memorial, and she's like, now, wasn't he going to take you to Cancun? And that was like, we found out about Cancun a year prior, um, right about the time we broke up, and so, like, I never really assumed that I had a ticket there. And, you know, as things went on, it was just never discussed. So there was never any discussion. That never went to your head. Then. Yeah, there was never a discussion that I was going to Cancun. Not so, on that trip, not with him. Maybe sometime in the future, some other time with somebody else, but no. So, no, that wasn't an what issue. What about the trip of him coming up to you, to come visit you? Was that something that was planned? Or was that something that... Yeah, it was... Because I wasn't even sure that that was, that was true. No, no, it was postponed twice. Um, he was going to maybe come up and see, and I, I kind of like was hoping he would come and by March, I'm sorry, May 24th, because I was singing the national anthem at the races, and I thought, I just, it's part of one of my goals for this year was, one of my fears to overcome was being in front of large crowd or public speaking. Um, so, yeah, anxiety with crowds. Yeah, there were three fears. One was handguns, which is one of the reasons I got a gun. There was a CHP here in town that said he would take me out and go target practice. And I went to the sporting goods store several times to see what he had, and they were all in the five or six hundred dollar range for the kind that I wanted. So they were too expensive. But then there was this one; it was cheap. It was like a hundred and something dollars. And I said, "All right, let's do it." So I put my money down and got my little um, ten day background check and all that. So and then I got it and I was happy, you know. Um, and then and the third one was skydiving. So I was going to do that sometimes, but 
he wasn't able to make it up for me. He, um, the, he was scared to tell me that too. He's like, uh, he's like, I know you get really was upset. Was he scared? Not scared, I'm but hesitant. he didn't want to be upset. He didn't want to hurt my feelings. He, and he told me that. He was on the phone in early May because I had known about that I was going to see him eight weeks prior, about eight weeks prior. Yeah, because I had approached the guy at the state, Doe by the Purple Plum, which is this one of the middle exits there. He works at the uh, gas station area. I ate there this morning. Oh, really? It's pretty good food. He used to work there, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. They're good people. They so take me off I went to go eat there, and I, guess I couldn't get that on my mind. So we used to work here. Constantly thinking about it. Because of this. It was a good place to be. I worked there twice, actually, when I was 18. Mm -hmm. no, I would, my dad closed his restaurant when I was 16 or 17, and that's when I was the server there. And being a server in a restaurant is probably one of the best positions because you get make, tend to make a little more money yeah. than the other positions. Tips. It's all contingent, but you know generally it works out in your favor. You've got, you've got that kind of personality that people <sighs> want to tip you. Yes. So yeah. when he didn't come up, was there an issue with that? Did um, you guys talk about that? Well, he said it's he put it so delicately that I couldn't be mad. I was sad, but wasn't mad or anything. And he said, "I'm." He's like. I'm just not sure. He said there's a lot of stress going on. There's a lot of things right now, you know, with this and just I have stuff going on. And he's like, I'm, I've been hesitating to tell you, but it looks like I might not be able to make it up there to watch you sing. And I'm, I've been scared to tell you that. And I was like, oh, you know, that's. He says it, and he taught me this this technique. He says it in a way to disarm you first, to where you're just like, well, oh no, no, you know, reverse psychology sort of. So he said that, and I could tell that he really was concerned that he would hurt my feelings. Is so, that when you decided to, or he decided to invite you up? Uh, no, no, not at all. Because um, he never, he didn't invite me up until he found out I was going on a road trip. But then he's like, but he's all definitely, um, definitely the first week of June. He's all, he's all probably before I go to Cancun. And so, um, as that week got closer, you know, he was like, look, it's, we had a big fight somewhere around then. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember the exact timeline, but it was in late May. And Is that when this email was sent out that you sent him? Or which, oh, was I see. a large email about your relationship? And oh, just how I think that, yeah, because I just could tell, um, oh, because I edited and, and I did all the editing and the grammar and spelling. He's not the greatest speller. That um, on his um, on his first chapter of his book, and he wanted to post it on his blog. And I noticed when he posted the introduction that he's like special thanks to Katie Barnes. And I have no jealousy toward her. She's just a great girl, and you know there's nothing there to worry. About. In fact, when when he, when I was worried about Lisa uh, Andrews and. Elena Gomez, her best friend, they were all spending a lot of time together, and so I wasn't sure that she would post flirtatious things on his MySpace, and he's like, don't worry about that, and you know, he's like, he said at one point, he's like, if you have anything to worry about, it's, it's Katie Barnes, and so I was like, you are so spin it to throw my focus off something, and I don't think there was ever any concern with that, I know that he liked her, but, but nothing more, um, as a, and as a friend, and he said she's a little freaky and emotional and stable sometimes, but I think she's just young, um, she's a nice girl. And so he said that, I'm like, and I said, hey, make sure you post a special thanks to Jody Arias for editing. <laughs> and he's yeah. like, you know, I can't do that. And I was like, why not? And he's like, Jody, we've discussed this. And what he meant was um, people, I made a few comments, because yeah. he was like, leave me comments on my blog and, and rate me five stars, you know, and that kind of thing, because also it looks like people are going there. So I left a few comments, and he saw, he saw people who already said things. Um, and he was in for, for I'm, he was referring to Sky Hughes, who was like, hey, I noticed a certain someone's been commenting on your blog, and I think it's because he had given her the, and I told him to say this too. Um, okay, I'll be real quick, because I know this is all just, I'm just giving you background. We sat next to each other at the last convention, yeah. in, pre, in a pre-paleo convention in, in Oklahoma City, and it's because we buy our tickets way in advance, so we bought our tickets last year. Um, and you know, because he qualifies for executive director every month, which is a, yeah. one of the top levels in the company, he gets to sit on the floor close to the front as okay. opposed to the stadium seats. So you know, I had a ticket because he bought a ticket for me at the time. So it wasn't a big deal, but we were just sitting next to each other. But she made a comment. You know, he of course he has to explain. 
listen, you know, she, we got our tickets a year ago. There's no way she's going to give up her seat for stadium seats. So he sent that ticket. I, I mean, he sent that text either to her friend Holly or related to her, to her or someone. Anyway, um, I realized that she was giving him a hard time, so I said, listen, tell her next time she says anything that Jody's dating other people and that she's moving to California soon, because it was already in the plans to move to California. I don't understand why they just couldn't, why you couldn't just tell them that you guys were still friends. I, it, what, what issue is it? I wondered that too, and he said it's because they, him and Sky had a lot of arguments, but it wasn't because they didn't, they disliked each other. It's because they both have sort of fiery personalities. Yeah. Um, she's very, she has um, a strict set of standards, um, and he's just like opinionated. So together that's kaboom. And, uh, but they, they, nonetheless, they were really best of friends, especially him and her husband, her, her, him and her husband, Chris. Um, and a lot of their fights were about me, from what I gathered. I don't know a lot of that. Is that what that email was about? Is the, the whole situation? Yeah, so when, well, I was, we had that conversation, and I walked to work, because oh, I was, you know, I just, purple plum in my grandmother's house. It's uh, being in Mesa, going to that, to that. It's just, it's ridiculous to drive when it's less than 10 minutes to walk. And gas prices here are almost five bucks. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support my channel, there's some great links below. The best thing you can do is like and subscribe. We will see you next time.